Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Sofa Digest. My name is Bobby. This is my wife, Anneli, and our dog, Constantine. And we are here today to talk to you about the Park Sofa by Albany Park. Albany Park is a newish sofa and living room furniture company, and we're really excited to talk about this sofa. We're going to get into great detail over the materials, the assembly, and everything we like about it, the one or two things we didn't like about it, although there wasn't much we didn't like. But for those of you who just want a quick thumbs up or thumbs down and you don't want to listen to everything else we have to say, we're going to just tell you right now that this is a full four thumbs up sofa. Uh, we really enjoyed having it around our house the past few weeks. And the most important thing about it, beyond the style and comfort, which are great, is the value. The sofa in the options we have here, which is uh, the three-seater sofa in vegan leather, as they call it. The vegan leather only comes in one color. There's many other colors and other fabrics, but uh, the three-seater sofa in vegan leather is $1,195. And there are better sofas in the world, but they're going to cost two three, four, five, six X what this costs. And there are even worse sofas that cost more. There's very few, maybe no sofas that we've tested in the past couple years that are in that $1,000 to $1,300 range and deliver the solidity and comfort and attractiveness of this sofa. So as Bobby just said, we really liked having this sofa here and we have had it for some weeks now so we always try to use a sofa and really get an experience with it before we do this videos. And I must say, you see we have a dog and it was never a problem to clean anything off this material and we will get into more detail about this material. As we said before, it's a three-seater sofa. It's on the smaller end of the th three-seater range. It's only 82 inches, which as you can see, is actually important for us because we had a pretty small wall that we wanted to put it on. So a lot of the other sofas are too big, but even being uh, small, 82 inches, we find it amply spacious. Uh, I can lay down on it head to toe and not touch the arms. While this is a three seater sofa, I will say that if you take away these cushions and there is another one, you can see that you have significantly more space. So I think at, like four people can very um, comfortably sit here. Um, just so much to the size. But before we get into more detail, Barbie, can you um, talk more about the whole delivery process? And, and let's start at the beginning. Albany Park is among a handful of internet-based sofa brands, meaning they started on the internet. They haven't had uh, brick and mortar stores across the country like many of the larger furniture companies. And so they really focus on the deliverability of their furniture or the fact that it is delivered and is assembled by you as opposed to coming fully assembled. The uh, first thing you'll discover when you go out to do research on furniture, especially sofas, is that many of the older furniture companies like uh, Restoration Hardware or Crate and Barrel or Interior Define, Serena and Lily, they have 12, 16 week lead times on many of their furniture items. Aww. They do have some quick ship items in most cases, but a lot of the things that you're going to fall in love with, they're not going to come for months. This can blow your mind when you've gotten used to Amazon and other overnight delivery things. Um, so Albany Park uh, is really awesome because most of their things ship within one to three weeks. I believe this exact sofa has a three week lead time right now. So not instant, but still pretty good by furniture industry standards. And when we ordered it, I think it was here in less than six days from when we ordered it. So that was awesome. It came in two big boxes. So they were still big boxes that you know, uh, can't be said to have been light or small, but they were manageable. I got them from the front doorstep where they were left into our living room on my own because I was home alone at the time that they uh, came. Assembly. This is one of the biggest questions that people have. On their website, Albany Park talks about their furniture only taking five minutes to assemble. They even say literally five minutes. What? 
We got to blow that out of the water. It was nowhere near five minutes. It took us 23 minutes. And because of running Sofa Digest, we're actually really good at assembling sofas. Um, so that's not a big deal because quite frankly, it didn't feel like that long of a time, but it wasn't five minutes. And I want to say that we, when we recorded the time, we really started with the closed package from cutting it open um, and included also getting rid of um, the material, like disposal of all the material. So I don't know if they have that in their time, but to me it's always significant because, you know, if you don't, you won't have the whole process in there. And overall, I must say it was very easy to do. And I actually have here this um, instruction. And as you can see, it's just one piece of paper. What do you call it? Like a little catalog, not even. So you can see it's super simple and the instructions were sufficient. It was enough and it, it worked perfectly straightforward. There's really only three things you need to do. You pop the legs on uh, and then you pop the arms and the back on and you put the cushions on it. It's about as straightforward of an assembly process as you can get, but there's no getting around the fact that it took 23 minutes. And the most time consuming part was attaching the legs because each leg has four screws on it. So uh, there's actually five legs, one in each corner and then one in the middle. So that's 20 screws, each of which needed to be tightened. So if you look in detail on their website in their video, when they assemble it in what looks like 90 seconds, the base already has the legs attached and attaching the legs was the most time consuming part of it. And as Annalie mentioned, they didn't include unpacking it from, from the box and disposing of the material. So all in, it was more than 20 minutes, not a big deal, but you know, kind of misleading marketing to say five minutes. In terms of the structure of the sofa, it's really well designed. We've done a lot of these sofas and Burrow, for example, comes in many different sections for the length of the sofa. Each part of the sofa is a, is, a, is a section. And that means you've got tons of legs along the bottom. You've got to connect them. And it ends up not feeling that stable. And, uh, you know, it, it just sort of uh, adds a lot of complication to the assembly process. This came in very few pieces. The legs attach very solidly with thick screws that you tighten with an Allen wrench. And the whole thing was very intuitive, very simple, and resulted in a very stable sofa uh, that you know we feel very confident in, structurally speaking. And that's not to be taken for granted in a deliverable self-assembly sofa. And also just when we say a few pieces, we really mean a few pieces. This was the piece that we're sitting on. So this is the largest one. And then you have the two um, arm side things. And I believe the a similar one like this here in the back, um, that's another piece. And then you just have the cushions that you put on. So that's really just a few pieces as Bobby said. So let's talk materials. This sofa is made out of a wood frame with metal legs and it has these foam cushions. And most interestingly, it's got vegan leather fabric. What? I was really excited about that it's vegan leather. What? Because we are a vegetarian household leaning towards vegan and really try to um, find products that are not made of leather and like shoes it's really difficult and sofas that look nice um with this leather look it's obviously also difficult and i must say this really feels nice i don't really remember what a leather sofa feels like because i haven't sat on one in ages but it feels um not synthetic and it's, it's warm, but it's not too warm. So our dog really likes it because he doesn't get too hot. And one question for us was, what is vegan leather made out of? So this set off a bunch of research and we learned from the manufacturer that this vegan leather and most vegan leather out there for clothing and other furniture and even cars, seats and other situations where you run into vegan leather or as it's also called in especially the automotive situation, leatherette, 
is made out of polyurethane. Hmm. Now, hmm. overall, we believe that vegan leather is a major win for the environment and a major win for animal cruelty, but we can't say that it's a 100% win. Polyurethane is made out of petroleum. It comes out of the oil supply chain, essentially. When they're refining crude oil into gasoline and diesel, polyurethane is among the various chemicals that come out of that process. And it's used in everything, all kinds of packaging, bottles, uh, wrappers, uh, even building materials and uh, varnishes for wood floors. It's everywhere. It's a side product of the petroleum supply chain that's not great, but it is a side product. It's already being produced in such vast quantities that whether or not we make our sofas out of them won't change the amount that's being created in the world, at least not much. And it uses a lot less energy and a lot less water to manufacture than raising cattle. And you don't have to kill the cattle, which is obviously a big win for cows everywhere. So the bottom line on the vegan leather is that it is uh, really comfortable, feels nice to the touch, it is easy to clean, it is better for the environment, and definitely better for animals than real leather, even though it does have uh, not a 100% clean record per se. Style and comfort. I think this is a pretty elegant sofa. It does an interesting job of towing the mid-century uh, modern, almost slightly minimalist uh, line, but without being cold or austere. And uh, it retains a warmth to it. It's actually pretty deep. I think as you can see in some of the photos that are floating across the screen right now, Aww. two adults can spoon on the sofa, no problem for movie night, Netflix and chill uh very effectively oh and it it's just yeah it's a solid sofa it's deep enough that you can kind of lean back into it but firm enough that you know you could uh you know have a meal on your lap or you know hold some food or you know read a book without kind of falling over or slouching too much so yeah it's a comfortable couch and what i wanted to add here is that it really feels stable it's not shaky and as we said we used it for for a couple of weeks now and it was really yeah stable and um also it's not we talked about the length but also the depth of the sofa is really nice um my legs are quite short so i won't even <laughs> reach the floor but it's really comfortable sitting here and as we did the trial video i don't know if it came across in the video just trust that this um depth size how much is it um it's is really really nice to sit on and it's a good feeling when it comes to comfort and style i guess my preference would always be less is more and with this sofa what i really liked is as we said we've had it for a couple of weeks and it's nice to have it around so it's not overwhelming it doesn't take over the room um and yet it's not clinically cool or doesn't have any characters that it looks kind of weird so i i think they stroke a really nice balance between between these two things being straightforward and and clear lines but also having this certain warmth to it that you feel like oh yes yeah, sofa living room I like being here. I want to sit down. Um, this looks cozy. I want to. I want to lie down on this sofa. Now we get to our final and most important topic, one that we already talked about at the beginning of the video, and that is value. The reason why value is so important to us here at Sofa Digest is because sofas can range in price from five hundred dollars for a futon on Amazon to. Fifteen or even $20,000 for something custom made by hand. And so you can't just look at how good a piece of furniture is. That's not fair. There's always something better out there. And nothing that we can afford, at least in our household, is ever going to be like, uh, you know, a heirloom quality thing that goes from generation to generation. But value is really where it's at.
as we said, there's almost nothing we've seen in the under $1,500 category that's going to be as solid feeling, as elegant looking, and as comfortable to sit on as this sofa. It really is that good in our opinion. Most of the other internet brand sofas that you'll find out there, such as Burrow, are going to be in the high 1000s, like $1,600, $1,700. $1, and that just doesn't feel commensurate with what you get. We loved it when we saw that this was only $1,195 and that they even have other versions that are $1,095. That feels about right to us. That feels like uh, a, a legit real price to pay that's not a ripoff, but not so cheap that we're wondering like how it's even possible. This thing is a good value. And just to be clear, we probably will not put the sofa in our will um, to pass it on to our kids but it does feel like it might as well last a really long time. Yeah, everything, the, the big question on uh, longevity is gonna be the uh, vegan leather. We've simply never owned something made of this material before, so we don't know how it will hold up over time. But considering it's very similar to the material used in car upholstery, I don't know, we're pretty optimistic that while this isn't an heirloom item, it may end up being one actually in summary we feel really good recommending this sofa highly and if you want to learn more about it and check out all the pictures just click on the link below this video thanks so much we'll see you again on our next review